Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Well, we did it. Deployed another three satellite tags and three different striped bass for the Northeast Striped Bass Study with Gray Fish Tag Research. This is the shot from uh, Dave Glassberg's Critter Catcher as Bill Doblier fights a tag candidate aboard Chuck Manny's Tie Man in the Shrewsbury River last Thursday. We had another high-tech tracking device deployed on Sunday aboard Chuck Manny's time, and that makes it three. That's a 48-inch striper for Bob Bowden. Three striped bass tags in the past week and some jumbo fish. So yeah, the tags are in play, and we will be tracking these jumbo striped bass through the summer of 2022 in hopes that they're gonna bring us some incredible travel information sometime in the fall. If you wanna follow along with what we're doing with this Northeast Striped Bass Study and the tags, the satellite tags, the green streamer tags, go pick up that May edition of the Fisherman Magazine. Look at the glossy article on page 48. We've got all the details that fish Uncle Fred in the May edition of the magazine, a very interesting candidate for sure. Jim Hutchinson, New Jersey, Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. It's Thursday, May 19th, and the big story, of course, we gotta say it, are all those big stripers out along the entire stretch of the Jersey Shore. Uh, we're getting some solid first-hand reports. We're getting some friends. A lot of friends are telling me about the striper fishing. Wednesday, Jeff Merrill was just out of Manasquan, said he was trolling them up. So it's good to see that these fish are along the coast and not just the Raritan and Delaware, as we've been talking about for so long right now. You can pick up the latest reports that we compiled this week. We post them every Monday over at thefisherman.com. But we do have a good stretch of weather finally warming up in my short sleeve sh shirt and my pasty pale arms. But it looks good uh, in the next couple of days and hopefully with this warmer weather, we'll see some more bunker busting striper action. We haven't seen much of it yet. A lot of those bunker have been off the beaches, but let's hope that we will see some, uh, some of that top water bite materializing in the next couple of days. Now I'm here this week on Herbertsville Road. I'm outside the Jersey Coast Shark Anglers Tournament Headquarters. We're right on Herbertsville Road in Brick. You recognize it, you recognize that old trailer, but this week, Friday night is the captain's meeting here at the headquarters for Bluefin Fever. That is the very first offshore tournament in this 2022 season uh, along the Jersey Coast. The Saturday tournament, May 21st, it is a Bluefin contest. And honestly, uh, we are not getting a lot of reports just yet on Bluefin. And I think there are two reasons for that. I was just talking to Rick Carroll about it. First of all, in the past week or two, despite the weather and outside of the weather, you've got some people who are tight-lipped about where those bluefin are because of bluefin fever. But the other thing, of course, we know gas prices are hampering the ability for a lot of guys to go out and say, I'm gonna do some recon. I expect that all changes this week because after we have a fleet of 20, 30, maybe 40 or 50 boats in bluefin fever, I expect next week we're gonna get some really ample reporting on what's going on in the bluefin tournaments or in the bluefin uh, grounds, mid range, offshore. Let's see what happens. If you want to get involved in this Manasquan River tournament, the way in is over at Captain Bill's. I told you that the captain's meeting is here on Friday. You can get all the information you need at jcsa.org. We'll follow along this season, let you know what the Jersey Coast shark anglers have scheduled. Not too far from where I'm standing right now, I guess within eight to 10 miles, I received word of the first near doormat fluke of the 2022 season. Now doormat to me is I don't call anything a doormat until it hits 10 pounds. This one was close. Mark Stratmatter brought in this 30 and a quarter inch throw rug into Gabriel Tackle and Brick for weigh-in on Tuesday. That fish weighed in at nine pounds, seven ounces. That's a jumbo. That monster grabbed a bucktail and a Gabriel spearing in the upper, upper stretches of Barnegat Bay. I say upper, upper stretches. You can think that I'm talking south of the canal. On the north side, though, the Manasquan River is still getting some solid reports. Um, I received word from Joe Jacopo, who said all the reports for the Manasquan River late last week into the weekend were on the outgoing water. In fact, he snared a 22-incher in a slot at the top of the incoming. But again, it still seems that the warmer water at this point 
outgoing uh, is where your best bite is. As these ocean water temperatures cool off or warm up a little bit more, you'll have some better luck on the incoming. I also got an email from at Sullycasts who was fishing with Lip Ripper Fishing 215. He's got a YouTube channel. They reported stripers on the Delaware to start the day last Thursday. Then they trailered after sunup down to Manasquan River, loaded up with some fluke. Uh, they were fishing again, the outgoing tide, gulp, and a half ounce eye strike jig head and bucktails with live minnows also. And Sully said that they completed their Pensy Slam you're short a weak fish for the Grand Slam. He called it a Pensy Slam, getting those bluefish on the slack tide. Now for folks looking for bluefish and not being able to find them, you're just not looking hard enough, or you're not in the right position, the right place at the right time. Again, more warming temperatures, I expect. We're gonna see more of those blitz conditions any day. But I'll tell you, one person that found the right place at the right time, my man, Tyler Conrad, who brought in this 15.56 pound bluefish. He caught it on an SP minnow in the surf in LBI, weighed that in at Surf City Bait and Tackle for that store tournament. I don't think that he registered that in the LBI Spring Derby because that's continuing on uh, all the way through this month and into June, so you might wanna check that out. Pushing south in our reports this week, let's start from that stretch and go a little farther south. Continuing to get a good striper report, not just in LBI, but also in the Brigantine Atlantic City area as well. Andy at Riptide in Brigantine, he went so far as to say, quote, Brigantine is the number one spot on the East Coast to fish right now. Huge stripers, black drum, and of course the bluefish. John R, he nailed this beautiful striper earlier this week on a Riptide rotter. I'm hearing the same thing on just on the other side. Noel at One Stop Bait and Tackle says they continue to do well uh, in the Absecan Inlet area just south along the Atlantic City beaches. Gustav Mondragon hit the Ventnor Pier on Friday in the rain and the fog. That didn't stop the fish from biting. He had this 36 incher hungry for a bunker chunk. So there's fish out front and quite a few out back. Uh, when you get down to Atlantic and Cape May County especially, quite a few stripers in the back along those sedges and sod banks. That's where you're up to score a weak fish as well, especially if you're fishing at night. And that's what we hear from South Jersey editor Anthony Califano this week in his South Jersey report at thefisherman.com. He said that throwing a hard plastic minnow, a soft plastic anywhere along the South Jersey coast this week could put you into contention with striped bass, weak fish, bluefish, Fishing at night ups your chances of stripers and weak fish, of course, and also upping your chances even more is fishing a live eel for one of the jetties. Talking about fish to 43 inches, catch and release stripers in the South Jersey area. A lot of tight-lipped surf casters down there for sure as well, especially when you get into Cape May County. But the reports are there, the fish are there. On the bay side, flounder pounders have enjoyed a great early season start here in 2022. The earliest start for summer flounder in New Jersey in at least 20 years. And we are getting some good reports in the bays and sounds throughout Atlantic and Cape May County. In fact, heard from the skipper of the high roller early Earlier this week, the ratio of keepers to shorts is much better this season. Perhaps it's with that lower slot limit, but if you're looking to score, the back bays are where you want to be right now for that fluke bite. Just make sure that you're all geared up and you have plenty of bait to throw. For more than 20 years, anglers everywhere have come to know one thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. Now, our Delaware Coastal Field Editor, Eric Burnley, let me know that Amanda at Lewis Harbor Marina had some flounder caught, summer flounder, fluke if you're north of Barnegat. They had them there uh, out of the Lewis and Rehoboth Canal, so they've been real busy at the cleaning station over there at Lewis Harbor Marina. The Katy did, for example, also went out. Uh, they still have that tog fishing uh, going on. Uh, they have uh, in Delaware, and of course, this week, everybody's opening up for black sea bass. If you want to find some keeper tog, you might want to also try uh, along the uh, Indian River Inlet rocks. I know some folks down there are fishing inside, uh, inside some of those bays and canals. David Lighthouse View Tackle said Cape Henlopen State Park, that fishing pier there has been decent 
for both summer flounder and bluefish. So th those options are there. And of course, you've got some Delaware, Bayshore, think Broadkill Beach, Woodland Beach, uh, fishing for, let's say, drum and striped bass. We are getting some reports along that stretch as well. If you're down in Delaware, don't forget the Joe Morris Memorial uh, Tournament is going on this week in Delaware. That's out of Lewis Harbor Marina. And I hope to see some uh, prize winning summer flounder on the board in that great event in, in memory of Joe Morris. We'll report back to you next week when we find out who won that big contest. I did mention the black sea bass back in play in New Jersey and Delaware. So you can expect the head boats in particular to be getting out and about fishing on that sticky stuff, looking for some of those humpbacks. Uh, a lot of folks looking for those 13 and inch over uh, 13 inch and over uh, this season with that regulatory change. If you're not into a grand scale bluefin fever tournament like this one, don't forget every time you're fishing on a head boat, you have the opportunity to walk home, not just uh, you come off the boat with some fillets, but also win some cash in some of those pools as well. Jonathan here did it last week on the last lady. Uh, I see the, the Jamaica out of Manasquan sailing for, for black sea bass as well. Don't forget those fishing pools. They're great. And of course, never forget to tip your mates, especially for cleaning all those, uh, all those uh, biscuits on the way in. Congrats to Pam McGee of Newton. She was the Governor's Cup winner on Sunday with this 37 and a half inch striped bass. Pam won a couple of rod and reel outfits. She got a plaque and her name is going to be engraved, memorialized in that Governor's Cup which stays in perpetuity there at Island Beach State Park. Word is that it was a tough bite for a lot of the competitors on Sunday in that annual contest, but there are some solid reports from that stretch. Uh, in fact, Cody Williams messaged me about his nine-year-old son, Ezekiel, catching his first striped bass ever over the weekend at Island Beach using some of the clam that he picked up at Grumpy's. Grumpy's clam, oh, tasty indeed. For those soaking clams anywhere along the beaches, of course Atlantic and Cape May County, but also we're finding in Ocean County as well. It's not just the striped bass, but also black drum are stretched out and moving along the coast. They're still down there in Delaware Bay. You've got a solid bite uh, for the rest of this month and throughout June, but I'll tell you what, more and more black drum are showing up in some of our catches along the beaches. In fact, Charlie's bait and tackle regular Lisa Chardine hit a 45 incher over the weekend. Clamming for stripers, but lo and behold, she had to drag this behemoth back to the, uh, the shoreline. Some folks keep them. Lisa wanted to let it go. God bless you, Lisa. Bob Matthews at Fisherman's Den in Belmar. He let me know that the marina has been a beehive of activity, sort of like being here on Herbertsville Road. But I'll tell you, fluke fishing in Shark River is excellent especially by boat. A lot of guys are catching them from the shore, but Bobby says the boat guys are doing well and the stripers are showing up in better numbers now every single day. Bait fishermen are using clams, bunker, and bloodworms to put a few on the beach, but you might want to throw some of those SP minnows. It's what got Tyler into that jumbo bluefish. He's plugging away. And of course, those, swing sh uh, those um, swim shads, the tsunami swim shads, or perhaps the kettle creeks. You might want to try an NLBN at some point if you haven't gotten a chance as well. The Raritan Complex, as we noted, it continues to put up the most solid and consistent striper bite uh, going along the Jersey Shore. Uh, Caesar Carranza dropped me a line this week about a 40 plus pound striper that he caught from his kayak that was Saturday night up there on the Raritan Bay. Now, similar to what we've been seeing uh, with fish dropping down out of the Delaware, but they're still up there. They're still in the upper stretches. But even up the Hudson, don't forget, we've got that spawn going on now. And little by little, as some of these fish drop out, they're going to join the Raritan Bay complex as well. We are in that situation at that time of year where everything is getting ready to explode, if it hasn't already exploded to this point. But there are still fish. There are still stripers up the Hudson. Uh, as a matter of fact, Mikey Grassy found a good fish, 36 and a half inches. That was up the Hudson near Piermont this week on a bunker chunk. Young Mike was a quick catch and release on this one. Didn't even want to get a weight. Wanted to get that sucker back in as quickly as possible. And again, 
pretty soon. I expect that fish to be down, oh, I don't know, West Bank, somewhere off of Romer. So th that striped bass action continues. We've got the June edition coming out in just a couple of weeks. I'll still be focused on striped bass fishing at the Jersey Shore at that time, because this bite should continue, especially along the northern stretches all the way through the month of June. I'll give you a quick rundown on the Fisherman Magazine's Dreamboat Fishing Challenge and the Coastal Kayak Clash. But first, let's take two minutes Head out to Beltsville Reservoir, see what's going on with my friend, George, the Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. We thought we would change the view a little bit. This is the view from Beltsville behind the dam and the runoff in the spillway. Quite an impressive sight. That's not a mountain, that's the backside of the dam. But talking about getting into some fishing here, uh, we do want to talk about the Delaware River. You know, the shad bite continues to go strong. Again, guys, a little bit of time left. If you haven't got out for shad, now's the time to get out and do it. But also, the striper on the move. We talked the past few weeks, you know, down in the, the Northeast Philadelphia region, starting to pick up some stripers, doing great there on the blood worms, but also pushing north. They're up above the tidal line. They are starting to get them up around the Scudders Falls in the Regalsville area. Uh, friend Tim Kieber shouted out to me and said he is getting on them on plugs. Yeah, the top water bite going strong in the non tidal areas of the Delaware. Uh, he even sent a picture of a plug. He had a giant one, of of course they're giant when they get away, but a giant one that straight and hooks out on his topwater plug. So great work there. Try to get out and get in that bite while it lasts, guys. Now also, uh, Paul Chickarine up on Wall and Palm Pack. It's not just the rivers that are they're producing stripers. The lakes are starting to turn on as well. Wall and Palm Pack, uh, Paul got out on drifting bait and got him some real nice, uh, one of those big girls up there, and there's a lot of them going around. That bite is going strong. Even here in Beltsville, we had uh, Rico Ramirez checking in he was soaking baits after dark and producing several stripers as well. Now, Jeremy Shower was out catching some stripers too. Same thing, soaking those baits, but he also got into some of those white perch and they're starting to make their spawn run back into those creeks. So if you got any uh, you know, crawlers or chicken livers or something, some kind of protein you can put on about a 2-0 hook, you can get yourself some of these white perch here in places like Beltsville. <clears throat> now, it's not just Beltsville producing those white perch. Jen Wong checked in from New Jersey and he's picking up some white perch too. And here's a beautiful two pound 11 announcer he got believe it or not on a jerk bait of course jane got him on jerk baits that's his favorite lure but they, again they are producing really well over in jersey and here in pennsylvania i hope you guys get out and try that as well well the weather's your guys i'm going to get out and do some fishing from pennsylvania i'm george your pocono outdoors guy New Jersey subscribers Bob Wagner and Rashawn Williams still hold top positions for striped bass and weak fish respectively in the Fisherman Magazine's Coastal Kayak Clash. With measurements for striped bass, those jumbo bluefish, and of course weak fish in New Jersey and fluke, it's a great place to score for you guys in Jersey who are kayak fishermen. I, I bumped into Ken Stark last week. I had to go back. I, he was one of the big guys uh, last year on the Raritan Bay. And now this year you've got striped bass in place. So if you're a kayak fisherman, make sure you go to thefisherman.com, pick up that May edition of The Fisherman, join the Coastal Kayak Clash. You could be walking away or paddling away, actually pedaling away in a brand new Hobie kayak at the end of this season. Now for your paid members of The Fisherman Magazine, don't forget too, the Dreamboat Fishing Challenge, right? The Dreamboat Fishing Challenge, where May's fish of the month is weak fish. At this point in the season, a lot of the weak fish sharpies do not say a word, but now is the time for those tide runners. And now is the time for fishermen subscribers to take advantage of weak fish being the fish of the month. And of course, you're fishing all season long for a shot at that 23 Steiger Miami at the end of the season. Second place ain't too shabby either. Marina Pez Vela Resort in Capos, you could be fishing in Costa Rica. Subscribe, $29.95. Don't hesitate, don't just sit back and watch our free reports. I'm glad you're here, but make sure you get the subscription. You get all 12 monthly issues delivered to your door, plus the 26 digital weeklies. And again, you get to compete in that Dreamboat Fishing Challenge. Don't forget too, we're only about two weeks away from the Manhattan Cup Striped Bass Tournament out of Jersey City, uh, at a Liberty Landing Marina. It's a great event, I'll be up there. Richie Torres here, he'll be up there. He's gone in for another Vets Prize, second year in a row. And I know that long snapper from Cincinnati, Clark Harris, he's already got plans to sneak out of the OTAs because he's going for a three-peat this year on Brian Rice's Jersey Devil. I hope to see you out there. You can go to manhattancup.com. Now, I'm hoping to see some solid bluefin catches this weekend, especially
especially Jersey Coast Shark Anglers have their annual tournament, the Bluefin Fever. It's going on this weekend. So Katie, bar the door, because at this point, uh, next week, now we've got solid reports. The tight-lipped guys who don't want to let you know where they're fishing, they're going to be speaking out. And of course, with gas prices being what they are, it's a great event. Expect to see 30, 40 boats in this tournament and expect them to see them on the Bluefin grounds on Saturday. Rick Carroll just let me know too. They've got thresher fever coming up later on in June. So things are going strong. Everything's happening. We're at that magic time here at the Jersey Shore where everything really comes together. Uh, it's not a time I want to travel. But I'll tell you what, why don't we find out what's going on in Costa Rica with my friend Ben. And I'll tell you, have a sweet, successful, and safe weekend ahead. Catch him up. We'll see you again next week right here at thefisherman.com. Hey, guys, checking in from Marina Pez Vela, Costa Rica. If you guys have not heard about our marlin, fad, and seamount fishery, you got to look into that a little bit more. May through November is the best time of year to go fish our marlin fads. These trips take place on large sport fishers, of which we have plenty here at Marina Pez Vela, 60 to 120 miles offshore. The trips are two to four nights and will put you on the best blue marlin fishing in the planet. Right now is the best time of year to go fish for them. And you can expect when the bite is on, upwards of 10 blue marlin shots per day. Right now is the best time of year to go guys. Check us out, Marina Pez Vela, Costa Rica. Hope to see you down here soon.